West Africa experiences one of the most rapid urbanization rates in the world. Growing cities have led to the development of urban and peri-urban agriculture, which complements rural agriculture in supplying city dwellers with fresh vegetables, fruits, and animal-based products. In this context, urban and peri-urban agriculture has an advantage over rural agriculture due to its proximity to markets. Especially perishable commodities such as vegetables are commonly cultivated in urban and peri-urban areas. For African cities, it has been estimated that urban and peri-urban agriculture contributes around one quarter of the total food demand and up to 90% of vegetables consumed. Growing cities are also accompanied by growing wastewater bodies. The limited availability of water in semi-arid sub-Saharan Africa has increased the use of this wastewater for irrigation, which leads to increased environmental and human health risks. Urban Food Plus is a West African German research and development network Together with our African partners, we use this network to tackle key bottlenecks of urban and peri-urban food production in the cities of Bamako, Mali, Wagadougou, Burkina Faso, Tamale, Northern Ghana, and Bamenda, Cameroon. Tamale is a city of approximately 370,000 inhabitants in the Guinea savanna zone of northern Ghana. Agriculture is a common feature in the urban landscape of Tamale. Farmers use open space to cultivate crops which commonly include lettuce, cabbage, amaranth, jute mallow and roselle. Irrigation is a daily practice in the dry season, while in the rainy season, Irrigation is only supplementary. Sewage wastewater from homes is a common source of irrigation water. <laughs> to measure vegetable yields, carbon and nutrient fluxes in urban vegetable production under different management intensities, the Urban Food Plus project set up a field experiment in Zagiri, suburb of Tamale. Plots were irrigated with clean and waste water at farmers' usual quantity and two-thirds of it. A special focus is on the potential of bioche to improve soil quality and to treat waste water. In this context, researchers of Urban Food Plus developed a simple and low-cost wastewater treatment system. Our wastewater treatment plant consists of an anaerobic pre-filter with corn cob biochar for elimination of suspended solids and particles, and a downflow slow filter with rice husk biochar for pathogen removal. With this system, we are able to remove up to 99.9% .9 of pathogens from raw wastewater. This results in a lower pathogen contamination of crops, which is in the range of tap water irrigated vegetables. Further, crop yield can be increased by 30% compared to wastewater. Due to locally available materials used for this efficient but simple treatment plant and the higher crop yields, it can be assumed that our water treatment system has a high adoption potential for decentralized irrigation water production and wastewater treatment. The biggest challenge facing urban agriculture in Ghana is lack of perennial source of quality irrigation water which is forcing many farmers to resort to poor quality wastewater for irrigation. The unsafe use of wastewater is largely the reason for poor public perception and poor policy recognition of importance of urban agriculture.
Ouagadougou is the capital and largest city of Burkina Faso. Also in this city, urban and peri-urban agriculture is widely practiced and contributes to sustaining the livelihoods of many people. In addition to diluted wastewater from canals that is frequently used for irrigation, untreated industrial wastewater is employed at the Kosodo urban farming site that was established by the municipal administration in 2006. Here, we investigate to what extent a cheap and technically simple gypsum application can reverse negative effects of industrial wastewater on local soils. Here, we are at Kosodo site in Ouagadougou, where the use of sodic industrial wastewater for irrigation over many years has led to negative consequences on crop production and farmers' livelihoods, especially for these women who are key suppliers of urban markets with vegetables. Together with these women, we set up a simple experiment to test and demonstrate the effectiveness of gypsum used as soil amendment on soil remediation. Livestock keeping is another aspect of urban agriculture in Ouagadougou. For example, dairy cattle farming in inner city Baguette and on more modern peri-urban farms is an attractive source of income for men and women. Located on the Niger River, Bamako is the capital and largest city of Mali. It has a population of approximately 1.8 million inhabitants and one of the fastest growth rates in Africa. Urban and peri-urban agriculture in Bamako involves market gardening, the growing of cereals, and livestock keeping. Cattle play an important role to supply urban consumers with fresh milk and milk products. But the resource use efficiency of the livestock sector is low. Researchers from the Urban Food Plus project address the role of dairy markets in urban and peri-urban Bamako. Currently, there are 2.3 million people in Bamako, the capital city of Mali. And this number is increasing extremely fast, mostly because of the migration coming from the zones of conflict in the north, but also because of the birth rate. So in the peri-urban and urban regions of Bamako alone, there are 5,000 dairy cattle, such as the ones that you see behind me. And we have an increasing number of consumers who are looking for fresh produced milk. So what we have to do here is to connect those producers and those consumers who are willing to pay for safe, local, fresh milk. So our job here is mostly to identify and to observe the value chain and what is happening and what connects the producer to the trader to the consumer. And what we are trying to do is to strengthen every actor and every step of the value chain to create employment, first of all, to create opportunities for investment, and also to ensure that the producer has a supply and has a demand and that the consumer reaches what it wants. Scientists of four West African countries and Germany are collaborating to enhance resource use efficiency and improve food security in urban and peri-urban agriculture. The results of this ongoing work will help Mali to better take advantage of the value of its livestock production in the capital city, Bamako. In contrast to the previously described sites in the semi-arid zone of West Africa, the regional capital, Bamenda in the northwest of Cameroon, offers completely different conditions for urban and peri-urban agriculture. 
fertile volcanic soils and a long rainy season allow the cultivation of a wide variety of crops. Vast grasslands in the city's rural surroundings support a still largely traditional and extensive livestock system in one of Cameroon's most important regions for cattle rearing. The rapidly growing human population in combination with intensified agricultural practices lead increasingly to soil erosion, land degradation and deforestation, which can also be observed within the city boundaries. At the same time, the region's bad infrastructure hampers trading of local agricultural products. Against this background, Urban Food Plus intends to implement some of its findings in close collaboration with local authorities, NGOs as well as farmer and consumer associations. During stakeholder dialogues, issues such as soil fertility management, farmer grazer problems, and benefits of improved agricultural technologies are jointly discussed. Such stakeholder dialogues are bridging between agricultural research and farmer practice, taking seriously the needs and views of the local farming communities that otherwise have no direct access to scientific results and recommendations. We have organized stakeholder platforms in Ouagadougou, Tamale and Bamenda. And these stakeholder dialogues are not there to simply disseminate research results, but to initiate a dialogue between farmers, policymakers, city planners and researchers to discuss the role of urban agriculture in the developments of the city. The urban agriculture in Cameroon, uh, before the Cameroon Urban Food Plus project, was practiced in a more divergent manner and uh, in a more conflictual manner. The different actors were practicing in different directions. You have, for example, the government department that had different visions of urban agriculture. The Minister of Agriculture was promoting in Westland. The Minister of Environment was banning it from West, uh, West area. So there was that general conflict. And then researchers were doing a lot of research on it, but with no coordinating uh, uh, central point. So with the common of the Urban Food Plus project, it has provided that avenue through the stakeholder dialogue where all the different actors are, in one, are coming to one uh, forum and are trying to chart a way forward to come with a much more systematic approach to urban agriculture and we hope this is going to provide a lot of opportunities. The Urban Food Plus project strongly depends on the cooperation of PhD candidates and postdoctoral researchers from both Africa and Europe. As a key contribution to capacity building and interdisciplinary training, the project established an international graduate school which conducts courses and workshops as part of a structured PhD program. Each year, junior and senior scientists of Urban Food Plus come together in the frame of an international summer school to discuss recent research advances. Urban Food Plus project has enabled collaboration between several national universities in African countries and also leading German universities. We have trained mainly PhD candidates, but we have also been able to train a number of master students in local universities which were supporting the PhD program. Above all, we were able to train number of female PhD candidates mm -hmm. from African countries to complete their program and to successfully start working in national institutions. From the perspective of someone who worked on urban peri-urban agriculture in West Africa for two decades, the Urban Food Plus project contributed greatly to the much needed stakeholder dialogues through various meetings and summer schools. During these events, junior and senior scientists from the south and the north were actively engaged in capacity development and policy dialogues with local authorities, NGOs and other key stakeholders. The Urban Food Plus project provides a process-oriented understanding of the potentials and problems associated with urban agriculture in West Africa. We have good evidence that health risks for farmers and consumers related to the use of wastewater for irrigation can be reduced substantially with rather simple technologies such as the use of biochar-based filters. 
Similarly, management systems that prevent soil degradation and inefficient fertilizer use were developed in close collaboration with local farmers, stakeholders and scientists in a series of meetings and are demonstrated at field sites. On the program management, urban agriculture can contribute substantially to healthy nutrition and income of farmers, livestock keepers and merchants in West African cities. In the interest of the public, politicians shall therefore do the needful to protect urban and peri-urban agriculture against other land use claims in a highly dynamic resource-constrained environment.